How's that going? Is that clear enough? Yep. Okay, so this is a um, semi-short presentation. So, methane pyrolysis, uh, that's what we do. And, and what is relevant for a truss is effectively it allows you to use your existing gas infrastructure. You can put through many cases uh, the same boilers, maybe just ad adapted a little bit to use hydrogen, but it decarbonizes it. We take all of the carbon out of the gas. Okay? Now, I'm not entirely sure um, how much of the energy is uh, contributing to your CO footprint. I'd imagine a very substantial part of it. But imagine you can actually take all of the carbon out, and just to be clear, we're not generating, generating CO2, which we're putting into fizzy drinks and beer, or burning it underground and hoping for the best. We take the carbon out before it goes into the boiler, we take it out in the form of carbon black, which is a fine black powder, and that fine black powder you use every day. It's probably on your shoes if you've got rubber soles, it's in all of your car tires, it's in the ink in your pens, it dyes in your clothes, it is permanently sequestered in a solid form. This is, we're not combusting it, it's not combusting the fuel, so effectively we're making fossil fuels goods. And it will help you satisfy uh, a lot of the requirements that you have to decarbonize. We have a very low footprint system. We make the, the hydrogen on site. So it's not shipped to you. It's not brought in cylinders. It's not piped in. Effectively, wherever you've got a, a gas connection, we can put our shipping container where that gas connection is, feed low, low pressure, medium pressure gas, Booker's gas. We can put it in your back garden if you wanted one there. Take three phase electricity and from that produce hydrogen which will feed straight into the boiler or uh, we can actually put it into uh, storage with, to, uh, and a reservoir for whatever you need. The carbon black we will deal with, we'll take away, manage it, so you've no requirement to deal with the carbon. This is a sort of graphic sort of description of it. Our system is a particularly low energy system. We use, everyone will have heard of green hydrogen, mostly uh, generated by electrolysis. Don't let anyone fool you, electrolysis is a really stupid idea. The reason it's stupid is you start, you need, just from the chemistry, about 55 kilowatt hours of energy to make a kilo of hydrogen. The kilo of hydrogen has 33, 33 kilowatt hours. So let me just say that again. You start with 55 to 60 and you end up with 30, 33. Now, with us, you put in about 10 or 12 kilowatt hours of electricity to get to a kilo of hydrogen. So we start with 10 to 12, and we go up to 33. So I think that's a pretty good way of doing it. Of course, we're using the natural gas as a feedstock, but we're not burning it. So in terms of energy efficiency, this is as good as it gets. Uh, we've been a winner of uh, one of the government grants, uh, so we, can, uh, we know that we've got the lowest cost of hydrogen um, proven by base figures. Uh, for about a ton a day uh, unit uh, on government figures either now or in 2035. Uh, we know that uh, we can uh, eliminate all distribution costs, so we've got low cost hydrogen. So even if you get access to something like the BP plant up in Teesside or uh, the large plants in Crawley or Hynet, which is going to be here tomorrow, and I guess there's some guys going to talk about Hynet. Uh, unless you're really close to these uh, hydrogen pipes, hydrogen generators, uh, producing hydrogen on site will be substantially cheaper. This is the sort of scope of the system supply. So, again, we would take advantage of your low cost electricity and low cost natural gas. We put it into a box. And at the other end, we've got hydrogen coming out, and we've got, um, we'll, we'll deal with the carbon black, as I say. Let's move this around so I can see it. Uh, 
on site, we probably need about 750 to 1,000 square feet, six or seven um, square feet of space to operate on site. We'd also need HGV access because we have deliveries of uh, a catalyst and a uh, collections of carbon black coming in. But that would be once every two weeks, not substantial. To give you a feel for it, you won't be able to see all this on the system. It's, that's roughly what it would look like. And uh, the only limit would be on, uh, in terms of the three phase, we need about 150 kilowatt uh, TVA connection. It's standard gas and all the way through. And this would be operated by us on your site. So again, no staffing requirements, no extra burden on the hospital and the trust. Core advantages, there are three ways to make uh, hydrogen, steam methane reformation, electrolysis as I've said, and squeeze away, which is methane pyrolysis, with a massive reduction in CO2 emissions, massive early, mass reduction in terms of electricity consumption versus uh, electrolysis, with the lowest cost of hydrogen distribution, and we have a little indirect piece, which isn't within your general scope, but it's a benefit we mustn't ignore, which is uh, the carbon black we produce is effectively emission free. The carbon black, as I said, you've got in your shoes and tires is highly CO2 emissive. So for every kilo of carbon black produced by the standard way, they emit 3.3 kilos of CO2. We emit no CO2. So the gig really is in this, is you're not just helping yourself, but you're helping everyone else in a pretty substantial way. Now, in terms of greenest, this is an important set of stats too. And again, these are Bayes numbers, not our numbers. We compared ourselves to a grid-connected electrolyzer, not to a solar-powered electrolyzer, because that would be a great gig. If you can get a solar powered one or a wind, uh, wind turbine on your site, do that. It's a really good deal. But most people can't. So if you're connecting to the grid, as it stands in 22, because that's the latest figures we have, our hydrogen is massively less uh, CO2 emissive than ele uh, electrolysis. And even, again, using Bayes figures for how they think the balance of power is going to be generated on the grid between renewables and gas and the rest, uh, in 2035, we're almost on par. There's a slight benefit in direct emissions, well, choices. Once we include our indirect emissions, we are massively ahead and a much greener solution. So if you remember anything about this presentation, go out and tell everyone you meet, electrolysis is a really stupid idea. To give you a feel on costs, again, these are mid-22 figures, we think that a, a kilo of hydrogen produced by Suezo and our methane pyrolysis systems would be uh, probably about £4.20. But of course, we produce uh, at the same time three kilos of carbon black. That's worth about £2.70. So the net cost of our hydrogen would be about £1.50 per kilo. That's uh, what it would be back in mid-22. It's different now because all those energy prices are moving around. At the same time, an electrolyzer, the cheapest cost they could get for their hydrogen is six pounds. So it's a very much cheaper way of making hydrogen on site. I've talked about the indirect savings. We think that's pretty important. Uh, we would like to talk to you about doing this. Uh, for us, if you want to come and speak to me, by all means, I'll put our contact details up in just a second. Uh, what we need from you is what's your peak loading, uh, a daily loading, obviously January, December, January time. Uh, for each boiler you have a system, so we, we work with CHP2. Um, whether your boiler's got capacity to use hydrogen and gas or dual fuel uh, ready. And if you have availability and uh, for in the space that we need and access. So today we've been speaking to folks up in Merseyside where we can put our systems probably at seven or eight of our boxes. 
are other folks in central London who can put any in because there's just no space. And so it depends on your site. It isn't for every single one. Contact me. We'll help you do a few quick, quick and dirty feasibility study. And after that, we can look at financing options. Obviously, you've missed this round of Salix because it was exactly 54 minutes ago when the applications went in. Now, we're all hoping that's going to come through. Um, if we get all the applications we put in, uh, we won't be able to do any work with you for about two years. But uh, who knows? We'll wait and see where that goes. <coughs> Finally, um, let me just get this up. Made in Sheffield. We're on the advanced manufacturing part. We're pretty central. Uh, if you want to come and see us, we'd be delighted to host you there. We're on, on establishing the site, so there's a bit of um, more space and machines and people in there, but it's growing pretty quickly. So uh, give me a shout. I'm more happy to take any Q&A questions now. Uh, hopefully it's compellingly simple, but if you've got uh, any questions, please go ahead. Yes, go on. No, we've got pilots going through next year's, and the installations we'll be doing will be pilots. The, the technology we've got, we've been working on for six to seven years, uh, waiting for the hydrogen market to come through. The, we have a lot of people who want systems, but when you actually get to talk to them about doing it, they need to do it slowly, slowly. So for a pound for everyone says they want to do hydrogen refueling in service stations. Uh, we've been installing these things three years ago, but um, it's, uh, we, the core chemistry and the core systems and the way we're approaching it have got some structural advantages over pretty much everything else, so we, we want to get it right and we do it. I can't believe I've made it all that compelling, but um It's a we we we're aiming to get it all uh, e it'll easily fit into a forty foot container. Uh, our system because we produce relatively pure hydrogen first pass and not all not all clients in fact not all hospitals want to have 99.99 percent uh, fuel cell uh, purity uh, for uh, for hydrogen quite a lot can live a lot lower it. but we a first pass we go through certainly 95 we're pretty sure we can get to 97 98 percent cross pass conversion in which case we don't need a purifier which will allow us to condense our system. I don't think we'll be able to get it into a 20 foot box. Um, there are some advantages to have a, a 40 foot box because there's more space. So when you're doing maintenance, you're moving things around. Uh, but, but 40 foot is, feels about what you would do. And then the storage container. Storage container. Outside and, of that room. That's right. Yeah. And we, we it's, it's, now these are real, real life systems. Uh, I'm sure there will some people will say we can, we should be aiming to have it all automatic and uh, uh, have it remotely monitored. I, we may ultimately do that, but as far as I'm concerned, we'll have a, a man or a lady on on site because uh, it's hydrogen. And, um, it's an interesting idea to leave it. I, you know, I want to make sure that it's safe. Safe is the key thing. So we we will pretty much always have that. And I'm, and I'm there. Oh, sorry. I thought that wasn't clear. So um, next year, we will tail end of next year. We'll have well, early next year. We're able to do 60 kilos a day. Uh, Second half, 120 kilos a day, and Q1 25, we'll be doing 250 kilos a day. Let me just get that slide back up. Actually. It's probably up there too quickly for you to see it. Yeah. So, 
ultimately we'll get to a ton of data, and that's probably a couple of years out. The technology will scale very rapidly to 250 really, really easily. The, the issues with going to a ton of data is uh, handling the carbon black. We've got a, t a two phase process. So we're taking a gas and we're separating it into a gas and a solid. So, you know, for us, it's 500 Celsius. Uh, it's better than most. Most people are a thousand Celsius. So thousand Celsius of handling that gets really quite interesting. The, for us, we you know we we, we want to make sure our solid handling uh, is efficient and easy. And we when we scale that up, that's the thing we're going to have to work hard step to do. And a ton is we need to be pretty sure how to do it. But that gives you the, the energy ratings at the end of the day. 250 will handle a hell of a lot of uh, NHS sites. Um, Tanner J will get, you know, will cover a lot of the very large ones. Also, it's a modular system. So if you've space, we just scale up. We just, you know, want another module? That's fine. Off we go. And particularly for folks. We don't want the um, ultra pure hydrogen. That's really easy to scale up and cheap because the most expensive part of the system is a purifier. So it's modules, build another box, another box, another box. Um, and then we, we might, if there's then a flip to wanting pure hydrogen, put a separate purifier box from it. It might be actually more energy efficient. So there's, there's some playoffs. On it. And it's still under pressure in that story, but not liquefied itself. God, no. Yeah. Only really stupid people can answer that liquefied. And by that, I mean people like Mercedes trucks. And then you, then you speak to the, the, the guys at the uh, refueling stations and say, so, who's going to pay for pumps? Who's going to pay for storage? Who's going to pay for the compression for that most expensive part? To liquefy it. And uh, we see these guys, not us. So, strange enough, everyone else will either be at 300 bar or similar. Bar. So, uh, for most folks, the most gas, well, you probably know it better than me, for example, uh, most gas boilers, 300 bar, what an interesting idea. But this will be stored at site specific requirements. So the hospital is going to be like in the 30 or 50. Uh, refilling sites, probably about 300. Because uh, it's, co it's costly. The compression is where you're burning through more energy to do. And that's the, the thing you're, you're trying to manage. Because um, it's a real cost. There's no, there's no magic to it. Um, certainly, and also the cost of the container, the higher, the higher the pressure, uh, the more costly the storage container is. So, uh, again, you forever look at optimizing around cost uh, for capital cost or you know, operating cost. And the same is true in terms of purity. It's a play, you can decide where your financial priorities are and what you're trying to achieve. And if the, you know, we can give you a carbon free system, definitely. No carbon at all. We take it all away. Or we have some carbon in there, uh, but a much lower cost. And that's the, the gig. We've had some great questions here. Go on. Yeah. The basis of the scene Yeah. So the, again, it, this is all comes down to the cap, it's a good, good point, I mean, the, the energy costs and the distribution costs all tie into this. If you're getting hydrogen delivered to you uh, by cylinder or by uh, tube tank, uh, effectively you, you only want a delivery once a week, and you might have to do it once or two weeks. Those are unbelievably expensive hydrogen storage containers breathtakingly expensive. 
Pipe tin, well, good luck with that. I don't know how much it's going to cost. It would be really expensive to pipe in. Doing it this way means that you only need to store two days max. Well, probably not even that, maybe a day's worth of storage. It also can lower you in terms of the various reg regulatory requirements you're going to comply with. But I think, is it coma? I'm going to get this wrong. Um, coma restrictions are pretty harsh on storing a bucket load of energy on site. So if you have a that sort of level of storage, which is only possible with on-site generation, uh, again, you're lowering your costs, uh, which is a substantial benefit. Five How quickly could it stop? Ah! Do you want a job at, do you want a job at Sweezer? These are just the perfect questions. Because we have a low temperature system, we can cycle up and down as much as we want. We can turn the thing off, wait for a while, turn it back on. We, I, mean, I don't think we want to do that you know, every five minutes, but we would effectively uh, fill the storage tank as regularly as required during the summer, and also in the winter, it would be continuously on all the way through. And that's how it would work. We can also run it at lower volumes, so we don't have to run it at peak optimizing work because the process overly is pretty efficient. We've got a microwave process, uh, so we, we can, uh, our reaction works uh, a very straightforward way across the bed, uh, so we don't have to worry about bombers and maintaining pressure and moving pressure all the way through. So we, we have thought through, there's a lot of thinking that's gone into the structure of the reactor to allow that uh, flexibility. In the way that you can't do for an electrolyzer, or you can, but only once or twice in its lifetime. Um, this can be on an awful day. Good. Last, any last questions? Good. All right. Well, let me just put my contact details up again, and if you. No need for applause. That's okay. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. 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 Thank you.